All right, this is fifth grade, module three, lesson 13. We're gonna be using benchmark numbers uh, in order to estimate and assess the reasonableness of our answers, all right? So the idea being, uh, it's, it's an opportunity for us to either before we do the real math or after we've done the real math, is to use rough estimations, benchmarks, to assess whether, you know, hey, is our answer reasonable? It doesn't necessarily tell us if we're right, but at least it will tell us that we're reasonable. So one of the big famous benchmarks is half, all right? Half is a really important benchmark. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use our half as the benchmark to, assess, you know, to estimate whether each of these problems is greater than one or less than one. So let's start with this first one. So we know half plus a half. And the idea is the bench, the basic benchmark, half plus a half is a whole, all right? So there's our, our basic benchmark. So when we look up here, we have a half plus four-ninths. Well, four-ninths is a little bit less than a half. So it's going to be a half plus a little less than half. Less than a half. So when we add those two things together, are we going to be greater than one or less than one? We're definitely going to, definitely going to be less than one. And let's do the same thing. Oh, let's do um, down here. So this one. So let's see. Four and three-fifths. Okay, well, four and three-fifths, the way I think of it is, I think that is a little bit bigger than four and a half. And then we're going to minus... And then, hmm, three and three-fourths. Hmm, that's a little bit bigger than three and a half. So let's write three and a half. So we've got something that's a little bit bigger than four and a half, and we've got something a little bit bigger than three and a half, and we're going to subtract them. Now, when we get the, subtract them, we're going to get one. Oh, no. So now we have to decide, well, how much did we fudge? What's our fudge factor in order to get our estimation of 1? Because at this point, I'm pretty happy. You know, I'm going to complain about this assignment a little bit in that, do we really have to figure out if this is greater than 1 or less than 1? No. In terms of assessing reasonableness, all we need to know is that our correct answer should be somewhere around 1. It doesn't have to be specifically greater than 1 or less than 1. We just need to know that our estimation is around 1. But I can see that 3 fifths is closer to a half than 3 fourths is. So that means this is um, less of a, a fudge factor than this is. So we subtracted more. So that answer is going to be, we subtracted more than uh, three and a half. So our real answer is going to be, or the, the correct answer here is going to be less than a half. I mean, less than one. But, you know, from a mathematician's point of view, and that's who I am as a mathematician, is front end or rough estimation is close enough that we have, we, we took that four and three fifths. We said, well, that's pretty close to four and a half. We took the three and three fourths, that's pretty close to three and a half, and subtract. So we know the answer should be around one. And from a mathematician's point of view, that kind of estimation is good enough. And I'm going to do that same kind of estimation on these kinds of problems. So I may not answer these questions precisely the way the answer key might be. I'm going to do a little bit rougher estimation because, for my opinion, that's really what a mathematician would do. Is it a little bit rougher than that? So let's start here. So 5 and 4 fifths, that's pretty close to 6. 2 and 2 thirds, that's pretty close to 3. So our answer should be pretty close to 9. All right? So, um use the, now we're supposed to use the greater than, less than, or equal sign to make these following statements true. I'm going to have to say, well, based on my estimation, it would be a greater than symbol. But really, 
it's not important <laughs> if it's greater than or less than or equal to 8 and 3 fourths. What's really important is that the answer we know is approximately 9. And if my final answer is something close to 9, then I'm good enough. And that's the kind of estimation that we mathematicians are looking for. Um, now we can do some, some more fancy stuff down here. Uh, let's look at J right here. Now, this they're asking a little bit kind of a different question. What, they, what they're showing us is that they took the 3 and the 2 and they subtracted 1. So 3 and the 2 gives us 1. So now you have 1 and 4 sevenths minus 3 fifths. So this isn't really an estimation question. This is kind of a, just a trick question. And so we know that the answer is, well, uh, this is saying 1 and 4 sevenths plus 3 fifths, but this is 1 and 4 sevenths minus 3 fifths. So that means we definitely know the plus 3 fifths is going to be bigger than the minus 3 fifths. I don't know if that kind of question really makes sense. To me, uh, from a math po point of view, really what we're going to be doing is we're going to say, well, 3 and 4 sevenths, that's a little over 3 and a half. So we can round it to, we can estimate it to be 3 and a half minus, and then we can say um, 2 and 3 fifths. Well, that's a little bit bigger than 2 and a half, or we could bump it up to 3, our choice. So I'm going to call it, just because I can, 2 and a half. So 3 and a half minus 2 and a half gives us 1. So we know our answer is approximately 1. And that's the point. And so when we're doing this problem right here, we know that our answer should be about 1, and that's how we can assess the reasonableness of our math. And so that's 5th grade, Module 3, Lesson 13. I'm taking a little bit of liberties to kind of change the problem because really the point is to assess reasonableness and some of their questions were just kind of a little silly. Uh, so we're using benchmark numbers. Benchmark numbers are like zero, one half, or one whole. And just rounding our numbers and then using those estimations to figure out if our answer would be reasonable.